Hello, good day. Welcome back to Go on the Run. And today, we're going to look at something slightly different, and that is basic Kubernetes networking or networking within Kubernetes. Now, the thing that's going to be strange about this is after part one, I'm sort of get back in and do something um, in next Kubernetes resource called service. But before introducing service, I wanted to cover basic Kubernetes networking. However, there's so much to the Kubernetes networking that we're not going to continue with part two immediately. Somewhere, sometime down the road, when we need more information about Kubernetes networking, we'll do part networking part two, just so you know. So this is going to be very different than what I've ever done before. So I'll sprinkle Kubernetes networking throughout the rest of the videos, but we're not going to cover networking all at once. Okay, I think that's going to make more sense. In this video, we're not going to be writing any code or you don't need your IDE. Um, you don't even need a Kubernetes cluster. Of course, you can create one and try the example that I'm going to show you. I'm just going to run the get command. So that's why you don't really need to do anything. Um, but you're going to see. All right. So what are we going to be learning about Kubernetes networking today? Like I said, it's the basics. And we'll review container to container communication. We already know this. And I'll prove it to you that we already know about container to container communication. And then I'll sort of introduce pod to pod communication. So those are the two things we're really going to cover here in the basics. So let's say I have a Kubernetes cluster and I, of course, have a node. And we know that that node has, has, has an IP address. Now, it's called the internal cluster IP address, but it's going to be an external IP address also. Because if you imagine that I'm building a Kubernetes net cluster, a uh, physical machine, and they're going to have IP addresses. And so those IP addresses are how I can reach them outside of the cluster. But within the cluster, the nodes themselves have IP addresses. And we can see that by going to the command line and running the kubectl get nodes space minus o wide command. And that's going to show us all our nodes in the Kubernetes cluster with their internal IP address, as you can see here. And because I'm using KC3D, I have multiple nodes, and so they all must have different IP addresses. Now, if you run a Minikube, of course, you're only going to have one node. Now, if we actually was, had built a physical or used virtual machine with their own IP addresses, you'll also see their external IP addresses. But we're going to ignore external IP addresses. But this is what I'm sort of showing here is the internal IP addresses for each node. Now, we also know that on each node, you could run one or more pods. But let's just focus on a pod right now. So when I create a pod with multiple containers, those containers could communicate with each other because within the pod, it looked like a local host, like it's one host. We've read that from the Kubernetes documentation already. And I said it all, we know this already because in section five, which is 26, section five, part two and three, we wrote a pod spread file with multiple containers, right? Our Redis container was a, um, a our Redis uh, container was within the same pod with our server container with our counter container and our polar, all four of those containers within the same pod and they were talking to each other and all they needed to use was local host. We didn't have to specify any other information, right? Um, which is very different than in Docker where Docker, each container seemed to have like its own IP address. Not in Kubernetes. Remember, Kubernetes, the fundamental thing is a pod. And so multiple containers in a pod look like if they're running on the same host. Well, that also means that since a pod looks like a host or a virtual machine, something like that, it too has an Ethernet interface and an IP address associated with it. And this is true. We can go back to the command line and type kubectl get pods space minus o space wide. And we'll see that so if we have a few pods running, and in this example, I have a few pods running, you can see each one of those pods have their own IP address. And notice, compare this to the node IP address. This is very different. It's a different namespace. Not that that really matters. The important thing is that the IP addresses of the pod is different than the IP address of the host. And it must be because we can have multiple pods on this host. And so each pod will need its own IP address. And just like on the command line here, you see in each pod has its own IP address. Well, if we go back to the presentation, I have represented the same here, where each pod has their own IP address. So it's clear that within pods, containers could communicate. But what about if 
we want to make, let's say, container A communicate with container C. Well, on the host itself, Kubernetes have, you can think of as create a virtual switch. And what it simply means is that it can connect the two pods so that in such a way that container A can talk to container C simply by using the IP address. So let's just say that how there is a port that's open on container C. Well, that's not a problem. Container A simply says that I want to reach port 8080 on IP address AYZ.2. And that means it needs to reach this, other, um, this container within that other pod. And Kubernetes take care of all this communication and you don't have to worry about it. Now, the other thing is because the, con the pods can communicate with each other through over this virtual switch in green, that little green um, box there, well, they can also talk to the Ethernet interface of that node, which means that though, they can actually talk to other things that you might have running on that host or anything that's external on your network. So let's say that instead of just all your containers, be, your, all your pods being on one host, maybe your pods were spread across several hosts. So in this example, we have two hosts and our host internal IPs are B1 and B2 respectively, but notice that our containers, just because um, just too much text, I give them the IP address just A1, A2, and A3, but those are IP addresses. And let's just say, in this example, container A wanted to reach, again, container C. Well, depending on what port container C is running on, container A simply says, I want to reach a service that's running on A.3 and the port number. So notice A3 is the pod IP address on a completely different host or node. That doesn't matter. Within Kubernetes, it makes sure and wire all these together. And again, you could think of Kubernetes creating a virtual network somewhere. Again, it's outside or above the host now, and it wires the host together. And of course, if there are multiple hosts, they can all talk. So within Kubernetes, you don't have to worry about a container running in a pod that's on a different node because Kubernetes unifies the entire network space for all the pods, meaning that any container could talk to any other container if it knows the IP address of the pod that's running in once they're in the same cluster. Right? So this is your pod-to-pod -pod communication because the container A that's running in the pod that's on B1, whatever the, the pod is, is able, the pod that's represented by A.1, is able to reach a container C that's running in the pod A.3, right? Because I'm going to use the pod IP address to pretty much identify the pods now. So, Kubernetes unify all that and makes it super easy. So that is the nature or the essence of pod-to-pod -pod communication, and this is how it's accomplished. Now, what is actually happening behind the scene? If you remember, I said that uh, we have the node, and what makes a node? The kubelet service, right? Which is that piece of code that's, or application that's running on each node, and it makes your physical machine, that becomes a Kubernetes node once the kubelet service is running there. And the Kubernetes service is running there, and it gets instruction from the control plane of Kubernetes saying that, oh, I want you to spin up a container, and of course, using the container runtime technology that's on that node. Well, guess what? The Kubernetes service is responsible also for saying, that, oh, since I created pod whatever, A1 or something, and this is the IP address that's going to get that information, don't worry about the detail, it is able to relay that information to the control plane. So the control plane knows exactly how to wire these pods up together. It knows exactly where pod A1 is running on which node, and it can route the information there and so on. Okay, so that's the detail we're gonna leave out about how the, the network can actually get done because it's involved um, you know, um, in Linux, writing firewall rules and all that stuff, and we don't need to know that. All we need to know is that there's this magic that happened where regardless of where a pod is running in your cluster on which node, then 
those containers could communicate with each other. So that's it. I hope you learned something. Again, I wanted to keep it simple. So I'll post pretty soon another video where we talk about services and what services are gonna do for us. Why did I go into looking at networking um, before talking about service, Kubernetes services. All right, if you made it here and you're a returning subscriber, thank you very much. I appreciate you coming back and your patience. If you're new to the channel and you just watch this material, consider subscribing. I would love to have your support as a subscriber and your comment and feedback. Um, everyone, regardless if you're returning or new, please, you know, like the video or if you, you need to provide some feedback, uh, instead of not liking it, just provide a constructive feedback of what I can do better or what it is that was a problem for you. Okay, take care. See you in the next video. Bye.